Now, the Foreign Secretary, Liz Truss, has vowed to hold Russia to account if chemical weapons are found to have been used in attacks on Mariupol. Uh, well, she's tweeted and said officials were urgently working with partners to try to verify details amid warnings of a crucial period as Russian forces redeploy and re-equip for their next offensive in the east of Ukraine. Well, uh, let's get the latest developments from journalist Stefan Weichart, who joins us from the western city of Turnipil. Morning to you, Stefan. I mean, what have you been hearing about what's been going on in Mariupol? I'm hearing the same thing as you're saying, you know, that uh, there's supposedly been a chemical attack. At least we are hearing that from the Ukrainian military, uh, which have been dropped by a, by a drone over Mariupol and should have made a lot of people hospitalized simply because uh, it makes it impossible for them to breathe. Um, but as, as we, we don't haven't verified whether this is true or not, but it does come after a lot of fear of Russia potentially using chemical weapons in Ukraine. And actually, a few hours before, uh, the leader of uh, Donetsk People's Republic, one of the Russian uh, supported uh, separate regions, was out saying that maybe they should use um, a chemical weapons at some point. So it definitely uh, is definitely something that's very worrisome, uh, I would say. And, and the reports are that it should have been horrendous for the people there. For us to actually get a sense of. The, the scale of the atrocities that are happening in places like Mariupol, you know, we only really, with that new footage of, of the theatre, got to grasp just how vicious some of these attacks have been. Yeah, well, the city is almost completely gone. I mean, there's not, it's, it, what we hear is that there's not even a single building in the city that haven't been taken some kind of damage, been hit. We're hearing about, uh, like, people being dead in the streets, uh, just being buried in, in, in the backyards of uh, apartment blocks. Uh, we are getting, unfortunately, very little information out of Mariupol uh, simply because there's really not a lot of phone connection and not a lot of uh, internet to get information out. But when we get information out, it's, it's a city where there's no food. It's a city where there's hardly no water, where there's intense fighting and where civilians are definitely in the line of, uh, of being bombed, you know, and, and, uh, and just have nowhere to hide. Uh, it raises an awful lot of questions about what the international community can do in the wake of, of this sort of situation. I mean, the number of people that we, that we think have been killed in Mariupol is absolutely astronomical. And yet, of course, it, it seems like the international community, in, real, in a real sense, is just sitting back and watching this. Very difficult to know what they can do. Yeah, well, what the Ukrainians are asking for is uh, the West to get more heavy weapons. We heard the Ukrainian president, uh, Zelensky, say that if the West provides us with really heavy weaponry, we will be able to, to lift the siege of Mariupol and uh, liberate the people in there. So that's the Ukrainian position. And it is, from Ukraine perspective, quite frustrating uh, that even though the West is supporting Ukraine a lot, both economically and with uh, defensive weapons, they still want the West to step up and deliver a lot more heavy armory uh, than they have already done. And they say that this is the solution. What the Western intelligence is saying and intelligence out of Ukraine is that Russia's really switched their intention and their focus uh, to the eastern part of the country. What do you think their strategy is? It seems that their strategy is to, uh, is to cut off uh, the old uh, front line in uh, eastern Ukraine, the, the line of contact, so to speak. And I'm talking about the, the front line that's been since 2014, when the fighting began between uh, Ukrainian armed forces and the Russian-backed separatists. And a lot of the Ukrainian military is uh, positioned at that old front line. Uh, and the Ukraine, uh, sorry, the Russian strategy seems to be to, is to cut the country in two, so to speak, so to kind of encircle the, the, the big majority of the, of the Ukrainian armed forces out in eastern Ukraine, and by then, you know, uh, cutting the country in two and being easier for the Russian army to deal with those uh, encircled uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, army. Okay, Stefan Weichert, it's really good to talk to you this morning. Thanks very much indeed.